In my opinion, there are few countries with physical geography as remarkable as Peru's. Take a look at this exaggerated relief map. The Andes Mountains cover the western side of the country, leaving little room between them and the ocean. Yet this strip of land is where Peru's largest cities are located, such as Lima, which has more than 10.5 million people in its metropolitan area. This narrow coastal strip that Lima sits on is a desert. As you move farther east, the elevation rises, and as you'd expect, the temperature cools. This eventually turns to steppe. As you keep going up in elevation, it transitions to tundra. But the other side of the Andes and the central valleys to an extent receive significantly more rainfall. As you go down the mountains, the short grasses of the tundra turn to taller grasses and shrubs, eventually turning to a subtropical forest, and then rainforest at the lowest elevations. The country is home to 13 of the world's 30 climate zones. By some accounts, that puts it tied for fourth as the most climatically diverse country in the world, tied with Mexico and only sitting behind countries much larger in size, the US, China, and India. The majority of the Amazon rainforest is of course in Brazil, at 58%, but the country with the next highest percent of the rainforest is Peru, at 13%. Only about 10% of Peru's population live in this region. The largest metropolis in the Peruvian Amazon is Iquitos, which is home to around half a million people. It is also the largest city in the world that cannot be reached by road. It is accessible only by river and air. This region is home to thousands of different animal and plant species, but more on biodiversity later. First, let's head back across the Andes. The Andes Mountains were caused by the subduction of the Nazca Plate beneath the South American Plate, which also resulted in what is known as the Peru-Chile Trench. The Peruvian Andes Mountains, as most of you are probably already aware, is where the famous Inca town Machu Picchu is located. You've probably seen another famous Peruvian mountain without realizing it. This mountain was the inspiration for the newer Paramount Pictures logo. The natives of the Andes Mountains, specifically those of a region shared with Bolivia called the Altiplano, also known as the Andean Plateau, have adapted to the thin air by developing an ability to carry more oxygen in each red blood cell, meaning that they breathe at the same rate as normal people who live at sea level, but the Andeans have the ability to deliver oxygen throughout their bodies more effectively than people at sea level do. On top of just being natural superhumans, the Peruvians adapted to the mountainous landscape with terrace farming, and they grow different crops at different levels of elevation, depending on what grows best. These mountains are home to the highest town in the world. It sits at around 5,100 meters or 16,700 feet in elevation. The town sits next to a gold mine, so as the price of gold grew in the first decade of the 21st century, a few small camps quickly rose to around 30,000 people. Within the Peruvian Andes is also the second highest railroad in the world. As far as natural wonders go, Peru is home to the world's highest major body of navigable water. Its name is Lake Titicaca. This lake is shared with Bolivia and sits at 3,800 meters or 12,500 feet in elevation. It is also the largest lake in South America. But maybe the weirdest random fact about the Peruvian Andes is that it is home to the point with the weakest gravity on Earth. This would be the highest southern summit of Huascaran, the highest point in Peru, the northern Andes, and in all of Earth's tropics. It stands at 6,768 meters, or 22,205 feet. Its gravity is around 0.7% lower than the place with the strongest gravity, which is at the surface of the Arctic Ocean. The variation in gravity is due to a combination of factors. This includes Earth's rotation and its resulting equatorial bulge, which make gravity around the equator slightly weaker, altitude, and varying densities of Earth's crust. Huascaran's gravity is lower because it sits close to the equator, and its summit is high in elevation. I've left a link in the description to a video that explains this in more detail. The mountain is also responsible for two of the three deadliest avalanches in recorded history, both of which happened less than 10 years apart. One in 1962 that killed approximately 4,000 people, and another in 1970 that killed over 20,000 people. This avalanche was the result of a 7.9 magnitude earthquake. The earthquake affected an area of about 83,000 square kilometers, an area larger than Belgium and the Netherlands combined. In total, the earthquake resulted in the deaths of around 70,000 people. 
caused 50,000 injuries, destroyed roughly 200,000 homes and buildings, and left approximately 800,000 people homeless. The country is prone to earthquakes because of the convergent boundary that the country sits on. This has also created volcanoes. Peru has 31 volcanoes, 16 of which are active. This zone is part of the larger region called the Ring of Fire, a horseshoe-shaped belt around the Pacific Ocean, where volcanoes and earthquakes are common. The Andes create what is called a rain shadow effect. Moist air is blown from the east. That moisture essentially becomes trapped in the mountains, resulting in the arid landscape on the other side. Though another reason for the aridity is the Humboldt Current, also known as the Peru Current. Air moving north is cooled by the cold water current, conditions that result in low precipitation, though interestingly it generates fog. This also inhibits the formation of tropical cyclones. It makes little difference, but what parts of the arid coast belong to what desert are different depending on who you ask. Some say the entire Peruvian desert is the Sechura, while others say that it meets the Atacama within its borders. The lowest point in Peru, and all of the southern tropics for that matter, is located within the desert. The lowest point is 34 meters or 112 feet below sea level. The Peruvian desert is also home to the famous Nazca Lines. Because of its isolation and the dry, windless, stable climate of the plateau within the desert where the lines are located, they have mostly been preserved naturally. This climatic diversity of Peru has of course resulted in diversity of plant and animal life. Peru is the fifth most biodiverse country in the world. The only countries with more native plant and animal species are Brazil, Indonesia, Colombia, and China, two of which are significantly larger countries. Peru is home to 18.1% of all bird species on Earth. The only country with more is Colombia at 18.3%. There are more than 17,000 species of butterflies in the world, and Peru holds the largest number of them, with more than 4,000 species. With over 700 different varieties of fish and 400 varieties of shellfish, the waters off Peru's coast is a highly diverse ecosystem on its own. It's also one of the most successful commercial fisheries in the world. This is largely due to the previously mentioned Humboldt Current. The current causes a welling up of marine and plant life on which the fish feed. But every three to seven years, the weather event, El Nino, negatively impacts fish abundance and distribution. El Nino is a band of warm ocean water that disrupts the flow of the Humboldt Current, destroying the feed for fish. Peru has a lot of other interesting features relating to its physical geography. Here are a few not already mentioned. A river that reaches near boiling. Rainbow Mountain. A stone forest. A canyon that is nearly twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. The second highest sand dune. The world's largest left-hand wave. The fifth tallest waterfall in the world. Another waterfall that's somewhere between the 3rd and 16th tallest, depending on who you ask and how it's measured. And the farthest source of the Amazon River. What other interesting geography facts about Peru did I miss? Let me know in the comments below. Before I end this video, I just want to put out that every Monday I send out an email with new content. This way I can reach people even if the YouTube algorithm isn't working for my videos. If that's for you, I've left a link in the description where you can sign up. Also, big thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more geography videos. Thank you for watching.